One Steam Deck use case I see being brought up a lot is the use of game streaming services. Everything from cloud streaming all the way to local in-home streaming. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Let's first take a look at cloud streaming services. The first of which I want to take a look at is GeForce Now. In the Discover app, you can actually find a third-party GeForce Now client. This is a lot easier to set up than the website itself. Adding this flat pack to Steam is about as easy as adding any other flat pack to Steam. There are launch arguments for spoofing your user agent. Unfortunately, Nvidia seems to have patched the exploit where you can spoof a Windows user agent to play Genshin Impact on GeForce Now, meaning one potentially legit legitimate way of playing Genshin Impact on your Steam Deck is blocked, unfortunately. Moving on though. That said, notice when you launch GeForce Now from your Steam Deck, it pops up in this really dinky looking window. And to even see the play button, you have to interact with this really tiny scroll bar right there. The developers for this client really need to make an option for you to start this in full screen, and that would alleviate these issues. Thankfully, I have a workaround. Go into the controller menu and then go to action sets and then create an always on command. I highly suggest creating an always on command for touchscreen native support. It makes the touchscreen act like an actual touchscreen instead of just, you know, a mouse. You can scroll up and down as if it were your phone, you know? To fix the full screen issue, I create an always on command for F11. It automatically presses and holds F11 the entire time. I wish there were a better way, but I think the developer needs to implement an option where you can start this application in full screen. Because at the time of this writing, there is no option for that. And now your GeForce Now experience doesn't totally suck. Curiously enough, this is one of the main avenues for playing Destiny 2 on the Steam Deck, legitimately. Now, would I recommend this for Iron Banner, or Trials of Osiris, or Raids? No, probably not. But you could crush out a few seasonal bounties, do some seasonal activities, you know, yada yada, whatever, right? The most interesting aspect about GeForce Now is that it uses your existing PC library. Anything from Steam to Epic Games to your Ubisoft account. As long as your existing game is on GeForce Now, you can play it. Of course, not all games are available on GeForce Now, and not all games on GeForce Now will be available on all platforms. There's both a free tier and a paid tier, and this video was made using the free tier. The free tier lets you play your games absolutely for free because you probably bought them on Steam already. Of course, the main caveats are there is a queue, and you can only play for an hour at a time. But once your hour expires, you can actually just jump right back into the queue and play again. So if you're willing to play your games an hour at a time, then you could totally do this. This is a perfectly viable way to play your games. Of course, there are two higher tier versions of GeForce Now, both of which featuring higher resolutions and a longer time to play with no queue. Whether or not it's worth it is ultimately up to you. But it's difficult to beat the free tier, especially if you have your own PC library. Next, let's talk about the laughing stock of the internet, Google Stadia. Google Stadia certainly was not the first game streaming service out there, but it was the one that really started off this entire craze. Before we set up Google Stadia, let's first figure out how to add Google Stadia and other services to your Steam Deck. First and foremost, download Flatseal, and then in either all applications or your Google Chromium based browser of choice, you'll want to add this little line of text right here. Without setting up this little line of text right here, your browser can't recognize controller inputs, meaning you can't use controller inputs to play your cloud games whatsoever. So don't forget this part. My preferred method of adding these specific programs is to install them as PWAs. This is primarily a Google Chrome feature or Chromium feature. On the address bar, there should be an install button. If there's not, then you can't do this with this particular website. But in the case of Google Stadia and Amazon Luna, you can totally do this. They'll show up in your start menu, and it may be tempting to just add it to Steam, but if you do this, this does not work. As you can see, there's nothing there. And if you try to launch it, watch this. It doesn't launch. So yeah, don't do this. Instead, launch the app as you would normally. Click on this button right here, and then go to App Info, and then go to App Settings. Once you're in app settings, you should see the little app ID right there. You'll need this app ID, so just be sure to copy and paste it. Now go ahead and add your Chromium based browser of choice. I'm going to add Google Chrome here because that's one most people will probably have. From there, you'll want to append these two options to the very end of the launch options. 
after app ID equals, you'll want to paste your own app ID in here. The app ID will be different per system, so I wouldn't recommend copy pasting this exact one you see on the screen here. Get your own app ID instead. And I'll show you the process of copy pasting this onto your Steam shortcuts. As you can see here, you just want to go to the end of launch options. After this, after all these commands, you'll just want to paste your new commands in. And there you go. Google Stadia on deck. If you have multiple cloud services, you'll want to do this for every cloud service that you have. If your cloud service doesn't let you install it as a PWA, you can actually just paste this instead. And putting it in kiosk mode makes it run like, you know, just an app. There's no address bar or anything of the sort. Just be sure to log in first using your web browser, okay? Now you may be wondering why I have Cyberpunk on Google Stadia, and the answer to that is I don't. It's actually a friend of mine that bought it and then we set up Family Share so now I can play his games. I gotta say, Cyberpunk is pretty fun, though I think I'd rather play it on actual hardware instead of, you know, using Google Stadia. Maybe I'll pick it up on Steam when it's on sale. Aside from that though, how is Google Stadia on Steam Deck? Well, Google Stadia on Steam Deck is Google Stadia everywhere else. It's the same experience. I have pretty good internet, so I can play Google Stadia fairly well. There is some input delay. But it isn't really that bad, unless you try to use Gyro. Believe me when I say Gyro with cloud gaming is absolutely terrible. It's not that there's a massive delay or anything, it's just that delay with Gyro aiming, it feels a lot worse than it should. So Gyro aiming with streaming is highly inadvisable. And that goes for basically every cloud service, in my opinion. Other than Gyro though, your mileage will vary with internet connectivity. In my experience, I can play this pretty well, but if you've got bad internet, then none of these cloud services will really be worth it, you know? Now let's talk about Amazon Luna, the underdog of this category. Amazon Luna's business model is a bit different from the others. Instead of buying games, you actually subscribe to Amazon Luna. This makes Amazon Luna more like the Netflix of gaming, to be honest. If you have Amazon Prime, you actually have access to a couple of rotating games. These games are rotated in and out every month, so if you want to play and beat these games, you better start playing them now before the month ends. And as you can see here, I'm playing Yeast 9, Monstrum Nox. Wow, there's like 9 of these games? The last one I played was Oath of Elgana on the PSP. And as you can see here, the game works pretty fine. There's minimal input delay, though there wasn't really much input delay with Google Stadia either. It was just gyro that was weird, and this game doesn't need gyro. Of course, on Amazon Luna, you don't really own any games. Instead, you subscribe to their service and you get to play their games. And unlike, you know, every other service, there's no way to buy and own these games yourself. Amazon Luna has a lot more games if you're willing to pay up more subscription fees, of which I'm not really willing to do so because I already pay Amazon like $7 a month for Student Prime, and will never cancel because I'm grandfathered into that pricing point. Would I recommend Amazon Luna? Well, you don't want to know the answer to that because I'm extremely biased against subscription services. But if you're into subscription services, then I don't see why you wouldn't want to use Amazon Luna. Now let's talk about in-home streaming. There are several options for this. The easiest and most accessible option is of course in-home streaming via Steam. On your main desktop, all you need to do is make certain that you install the games on your desktop and then enable this option. You can find this in the Steam settings menu on Windows or on Linux or whatever. Now you can navigate to a game that you don't have installed on your Steam Deck. And there should be a little arrow button that lets you select which desktop you want to run this from either on the Steam Deck itself or your main desktop, whatever it's called. And as you can see here, it works just fine. Of course, it can be a little difficult to record, especially if you're using the same computer both to stream games from and to record footage of. So uh, yeah, there's that. Just don't use the same computer to record and stream at the same time. Use a second computer if you're going to do that. And there's Moonlight. Moonlight is yet another option for streaming games. Moonlight is considered to be the best in streaming, though ultimately you will need an NVIDIA GPU to make full use of it. Who knows, maybe I'll make a tutorial for Moonlight in the future as it's kind of an involved process. So typically Moonlight does work, but Moonlight really doesn't like my ultra wide monitor, nor does it like having multiple monitors it seems. I'm not certain as to why this is, but that's just the way it is I guess. Streaming from your gaming desktop isn't necessarily convenient, especially if you have multiple monitors and if you have unusual aspect ratios, like ultra wide in my case. 
But if you've got a standard aspect ratio monitor and only one monitor, Moonlight works great. I just couldn't capture any footage because I couldn't. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that streaming services are definitely viable on the Steam Deck, provided you have great internet connectivity. And in-home streaming is a great legitimate way to play games that you already own on your own hardware, without needing an external service, and without paying more than you need to pay. The issue on my hand, of course, is the fact that I'm both trying to use my same computer for recording and I have multiple monitors and an unusual aspect ratio for one of them. We finally relaunched our Patreon page, so be sure to check us out if you want to support us. Promise we'll start doing exclusive content soon. If you like high-tech lowlife, you should subscribe and check out my other videos. And for more high-tech lowlife updates, be sure to join our Discord server in the description below.